to one of the best schools in West Africa. How was it being the pride of Luila? So the first question is, can I definitively make a case why Luila is one of the best schools in West Africa? No, not this time. It's totally made up. Pure. Do we have the data to back it up? No. Do I have a concrete examples to explain why it's the best? Yes. So let me start off by talking about my secondary school experience. So I went to Luila at 10 years old. My parents decided that they are tired of raising their children, so let boarding school do it. And one of the first challenges you find out with going to boarding school is that you basically have to show up in school and try to smuggle whatever you have into school. So Luila was a very um, strict school when it came to things called contraband. Contraband were things were not allowed on campus for lots of different reasons. Some that made sense, some that didn't. And on resumption day, that's the day I meant to show up at school you would try to smuggle things in that you really wanted, one of which was, in, was food. You weren't allowed to bring food from home. Did I get suspended from Luila once for smuggling food in? Yes, but not on resumption day, on visiting day, but. How it was, was that there was a dining hall, and when you drive into Luila, you'd go to the dining hall to get your suitcase checked, and people would find creative ways to smuggle things in, and if you didn't get suitcase checked, they would look through the names of people in your year to see if your name wasn't on the list and your name could only show up on the list after you had your suitcase checked. Afterwards, if you were able to smuggle whatever you got in, that's good because you have to keep it hidden for the rest of the year because sometimes it would have random checks. But this is one of the thrills of being a teenager. You think you're invincible until you get suspended, but whatever. Another thing was bullying. Oh my Lord, fucking bullying. You know, when I became a senior, I always forget that this is also to a non-Nigerian audience, but in Nigeria, because it's a very hierarchical society, there's the junior secondary and then there's the senior secondary. I think we got this system from the British system of education. I'm not sure. And your junior secondary years are made up of three years. So GSS1, GSS2, GSS3. And your senior secondary school is also made up of three years, SS1, SS2, and SS3. So when I became a senior, by the time I entered SS3, where I was now top of the hierarchy. We weren't even allowed to interact with juniors nearly as much. On, on our dining hall tables, where I had my food eaten by some raggedy ass motherfucking seniors, we weren't allowed to sit with juniors anymore because they were like, oh, let the juniors eat. Also, at that point, they had done so many harsh punishments for bullying. Not like I ever wanted to bully. My parents raised me, right? I wasn't like some of these demented people I went to school with. But like, when I even became a senior that if I wanted to, I could, I just didn't have the energy and I couldn't. Anyway, you know, one of the things about going to school like Lula is that on the outside, we seem like this ultra privileged school. However, on the inside, like I was one of the poorer Lula people. The only reason why like I started school on time every year was because in my house, when we pay school fees, we started from the first to the last born. So I was the first. So I always got my school fees paid first. And that's why I deeply hate every single person that took anything from me in Loyola, especially those godforsaken seniors. Because I was there when my parents would talk about how hard it was to pay for my fees and you ate my motherfucking food. Are you mad? Did they raise you right? You know, that's why some of you till today, you have no hairline. That's why some of you, your cousins are joining cults. That's why some of you, no matter which fashion line you, you start, it will always fail because enough people have sworn for your ass. And I deeply hate them till today. I deeply motherfucking hate any single person that bullied me in Lula. You know what, what happened was, um, as I've spoken about in my previous videos, there was a time that I worked as a hairdresser in DC. And one of the times I was in the salon, I looked through the window and I saw a girl who bullied me in Lula pass through the window. And I said her name. And the other hairdresser was so confused, like, why the fuck are you calling this person's name? And I go out and I see her name again, she turns. This short bitch. She was so fucking short, and this was this was in the like the ghetto wish part of DC. I should have beat her fucking ass. I should have fucking beat her. But no, she didn't even remember me. That raggedy bitch that made me miserable didn't even remember me. Next time I will beat your ass. Next time I will beat your ass. Next time. Anyway, bullying. Was I bullied? Yes. Did I know other people got bullied worse? Yes. But. Do I think the people who used to bully them were deeply demented? Yes. I also think they were deeply demented. Very, very deeply demented. Did Luila take it very seriously? Yes, Luila had to take it very seriously. Um, you know, the funniest thing is that when I was in SS3, and as I said, you couldn't sit on tables with juniors anymore. You had to sit on tables with people your year. 
There were not still girls in my year that were getting bullied by boys in my year. <laughs> Could never happened to me because on my table, the girls ate first. Like on other tables, girls would show up and they'd be like no bread or they would have like an empty pot of rice. That could never have been on my table. Never could have happened. I got too much dignity and self-respect. My parents raised me too well to let anybody in my year intimidate me. In fact, on my table, we kind of used to bully the boys. Not like we used to bully them too much. Like, you know, when women are mean, we're not nearly as mean as men can be mean. So like, um, let's just say we ate good. We ate very well. And everybody used to blame me. Everybody used to blame me about it. He'd be like, on that table, yada, 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 yada. But every girl on that table used to eat good. I was a sacrificial lamb. Lord have mercy. Also, another thing about going to Louisville is you had to cut your hair. Which, looking back, that policy never made sense. It still makes no fucking sense. Like, it was one of those policies that were intended to make sure that young girls, like, focused on their education instead of focusing on hair. But, like, all we ever did was focus on our hair because we had to cut it and always had to cut it and didn't want to. If we just did our hair once every two weeks, we wouldn't focus on it so much. Like, I have friends who went to school where they could do their hair. Well, actually, my siblings went to those schools. And they just did their hair and didn't have a problem with it. It's one of those situations where you create policies that end up backfiring on themselves. Academics, Olorila was very academically competitive. In the Jesuit Catholic doctrine, education is very, very important. The Jesuits are known specifically for educating people who want to be part of their Catholic denomination. So Olorila was very intense academically. Another thing that made it worse was that we were always ranked academically, which might have made us work harder in Olorila, but did not help us when we were trying to leave. I remember this time I came 40th. 4-0 in a class of 160 and the difference between the grade point average between me and the person that came first was I think four points so you had 10 kids and four points between us and what that meant was that every point fucking counted and there should be a way where Lula, like if we're sending our transcript for college admissions that we do some kind of grade curve because the reality is that the amount of academic pressure and rigor that Lula students had to bring to the table I don't know if, you, if we can compete if it could be have been compared to our peers in other parts of the world but when you're sending in your transcripts nobody cares about that and in very competitive schools they already curved the grade when i was in notre dame and i was taking a physics class that everybody was feeling they told me at the end of the year don't worry the professor would curve the grade so much that every d would look like a b and i also know that like in other schools like phillips exeter like other top schools they focus more on collaboration and i think this there's something that like Lula alum should do is that we should either force the hand of the administration to curve our grades eventually or to remove rankings completely and just make it like an alphabetical thing you get an a grade you get a b grade something like that but i don't know i'm no longer there and i'm not rich enough to donate enough money to have some kind of change so what made Loyola different what are some things that i could arguably say made Loyola one of the best schools in the nation one of those things is by virtue of you being close to other Loyola students you were far more privileged than you think you were so when I had a worldview when I was younger, you had like Nigeria here and you had like America here. And in America, there was like Harvard in here. So just thought like by virtue of you being closer to Harvard, you had more resources to get in. And then by us being here, it was just harder. But like when I moved abroad and I saw how in Lula, when it was time for SAT, the SATs and for TOEFL and all these other interest exams, our hallways were lined with textbooks. You had teenagers, some of which were very rich who didn't give a fuck, whose parents would always replace it, had lots of resources to basically fight their battles for them. And if you were just friends with one of them, you could honestly just use their textbooks even if you weren't that rich. So I think one of the advantages of going to like Lula is that like there was an ecosystem set up to make sure that you could navigate the world internationally just a little better. And one of them was that there was just like a surplus of textbooks lying around. And I realized that that's no normal in any school. Also, with the fact that Loyola has a very strong social graph. I don't know if you know this, when you graduate from a small enough school, your weak ties in the school become far stronger outside. So when I was trying to get into tech, I would apply to tech companies and I would reach out to any Loyola alum that worked at that company. I would be like, oh, I'm a Loyola alum on LinkedIn and they would always refer me internally. Even though inside in the school, we're like, I don't fuck with you. Outside, you're like one of us. We have this thing in common and I want to see you succeed. And so that's one of the things that I don't know how, whether other schools in West Africa also have that 
strong of a social graph that you can leverage your network even people you've never met i remember this girl who went to lula with me and she bought me my first pair of lululemons i love that girl to today she knew how hard facebook was for me and she was like you know what i got you and she got me my first pair of lululemons i still have those lululemons still today they ripped everywhere but i still got them and we had a very beautiful campus like at, in like Nigeria specifically as a whole, there isn't as much emphasis on architecture as we would like. I think our buildings are built with functionality mainly in mind. But Lula is actually a very beautiful campus, at least some parts of it, and they try to make it more beautiful. That roundabout with St. Ignatius, that shit beautiful as fuck, okay? Um, also, the fact that... Um, Also, I talked about the fact that because it's a Jesuit college, there was a high emphasis on education. Another advantage of it being a Jesuit college is that there are other Jesuit colleges around the world. And I know this for a fact that there are some Jesuit colleges where they have scholarships or they specifically try to recruit from Loyola. I know this as a fact. Not all of them, but some of them. And as alum, it's important that we begin to grow that network and make it easier for other Loyola people that come behind us. What else? What else? What else? What else? What else? What else about my experience in Loyola? Do I still talk to some people? Yeah, some. Not nearly as many as I thought I would, but I have like two or three friends I still talk to every single day. As with all things in life, you end up just filtering, but I don't think I hate anybody or anything like that. Apart from those raggedy motherfuckers that ate my biscuit. Give me my fucking, give me my yali biscuit back. Give me my biscuit. I want that sh I want it back. I will forever swear for some of you people. I don't care. Your parents did not raise you well. Your parents abandoned you. So parents, some of you, your parents used to abuse you. And you went to go and take down on other people's children. You need prayer. You need fasting. You need deliverance. That's all. So, have a lovely rest of your day. <laughs>